Hi, I'm Lee Ronaldo. I'm in San Francisco. I'm at Amoeba Records, and uh, this is What's in My Bag. First record, No New York. Seminal vinyl product of uh, late 70s, early 80s New York. Eno produced. Uh, I've had a couple copies of this record that have either gotten worn out or stolen over the years. The coolest thing about this record were these pictures of the band members on the back. I just remember when we would look at this record and see these people, every single one of them looked like they came out of an insane asylum or something like that. The thing I remember about all these bands is that pretty much collectively they could barely play and yet they were making the most amazing, interesting music. I mean, Teenage Jesus, the drummer had pretty much like one stick and one drum. The guitar had like two strings on it, you know? And Lydia was just playing like sort of noise slide guitar and it was, it was just absolutely amazing. It really reduced rock back to its essentials in like the most fantastic way. And that will segue me into this, which is a compilation, video compilation of Talking Heads called Chronology. I saw Talking Heads in their, their very earliest days uh, when they were touring in a station wagon, touring little towns in New York, and was completely hooked. It's kind of like that movie they did in that it's a progression from the earliest trio days up through the big band days with different videos, but the videos are in general really crude. There's a lot of stuff filmed at CBGB's and at the kitchen in New York uh, when they were a trio. And um, it kind of traces their evolution in this really interesting way. I remember the first time I saw them, the thing that impressed me most was that everyone in the band had a watch on. And I thought, like, that is really weird. I've never seen anybody on stage that had a watch on their wrist. It just seems so antithetical to the rock move. And, and for that, in some way, seemed really cool. I picked this Sandy Bull record. I think this is a recent release, Sandy Bull and the Rhythm Ace. It's just him and his uh, primitive drum machine. And Sandy played uh, electric and acoustic guitar. He did experiments with, with early rhythm machines and with uh, Tape recorders, you can see in this picture, he's got a reel-to-reel -reel tape doing backing or delay stuff on stage. And he played the oud and a lot of weird esoteric instruments, but I kind of discovered him at the same time that I was listening to people like John Fahey and Leo Kotke. And when I first met uh, Kim, she had some Sandy Bull records uh, in her parents' house in LA when we first started going to LA in the early 80s. And I just remember listening to them over and over. They just really impressed. Something about the mystique and mysterious quality of them really impressed me. Let's shift gears, let's go to ODB. This just got re-released. This is one of the sickest hip hop albums of all time. ODB was just like so off the hook in terms of the lyrics. He wanders away from the lyrics, he wanders off tune, and just like, he's just kind of is doing what he wants. It's, it's both like super intense and like laugh out loud hysterical. I mean, there's Cheech and Chong and Lenny Bruce. Were, so this record is, is very appropriate to be in the, in the comedy section. If, if hip hop was here and comedy was here, this would be the perfect place to be stashing this record. Deluxe edition of, of the first McCartney record. My father brought home the first Beatles album and the first couple singles for me. The year, the year that they played Ed Sullivan, like the week they played Ed Sullivan. You know, when Paul struck out on his own, you know, they, they, none of those guys could do any wrong in that period. I mean, you know, All Things Must Pass is amazing. The first Lennon record and Yoko's companion record are both incredible. But I loved something about this record just because it had this really personal side to it. You know, supposedly they went up to his house in Scotland and made it in the living room. I love records where you can really tell they were made in a particular space. We 
stole some musical elements from this for one of the songs on, on, on my record. I didn't realize it at the time, but definitely stole a couple musical things for, for this song called Off the Wall. This record I just found out about last week. I wish I had the vinyl to show you because it's very beautiful. It's a, a re resuscitated Flying Nun label from New Zealand. I think they were out of business for a long time and they just kind of came back. It's a, a compilation of New Zealand groups, many of which I never got to see, unfortunately, even though Sonic Youth went to New Zealand in late 80s for the first time. Just the Tall Dwarves are on here, the Chills. I mean, this is, this is bound to be an amazing record. And I, I haven't heard it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> got one more thing. This is from your DVD section here. It's Jean-Luc Godard's Histoire du Cinéma. I, I'm a big Godard freak. I love just about everything he's done. There he is, upside down. This is his sample slash collage of uh, his, his per very personal take on the history of cinema. And it's all samples and bits of stolen imagery and sound from, from films throughout uh, cinema history. It's an amazing work by, you know, one of the masters of cinema whom I revere and um, I'm looking forward to checking it out. So that's what's in my bag. I think it's time, time to check out. Thanks for listening. Take care. Now, me, bah.